Hey everybody, hope that you're having a great day. We are continuing in the Gospel of John. We are in chapter 19. I want to look at a passage where I'm kind of skipping through some of the crucifixion scene. Uh, not intentionally, we could talk about it and dwell on it. Um, but I really feel like I, I want to talk about this one passage this afternoon or this morning. It's in John 19. Uh, we'll begin in uh, verse 23. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it up, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, and here's where I want to get to. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. I can't imagine the grief that Mary was going through. I'm not worried about the disciples or even the followers, Mary Magdalene or any of the other women, but his mother. I've often told the boys, and I, you could ask either boy, who is your best friend? Who does your dad say is your best friend? And they will tell you, mom, that's their best friend. And when I think about this passage, man, I, I get teary-eyed. I can't imagine, not the dad, it would be hard on me, but I can't imagine the mom watching, grieving, feeling the pain that Jesus is feeling. I can't imagine if it's, whether it's your nephew, whether it's your niece, whether it's a cousin, whoever it is, and you're watching them go through that of the heartache and the pain. And then Jesus looks down. He looks at John and says, John, that's your mom. You take care of her. And he looks at Mary and it's like, mom, he's now your son. He is going to take care of you. And I love the fact that John tells us, even though this is John and this is the disciple whom Jesus loved. So he kind of makes it clear. But he says, from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home took her to his own home. He took her in. She became his mother. He might have had a mom. Didn't matter. John might have had a wife. Didn't matter. This is my commitment. And I love that John did that because in our world today, we struggle with commitment. We struggle with accountability. We struggle with responsibility. We want to have all the authority but we don't want the responsibility and the accountability that goes along with it. And so I love the fact that John said, you know what? I am taking her into my home and she has become my mom. And I just wonder how many people could we do that for? Maybe we don't take them in, but we look at them and we, we help them to know that they are wanted, that they are loved, that they are cared for, that they know Jesus is alive. Why? Because of the way we love. That's a great testimony. That is the greatest testimony we can give to the world. Yes, we can talk about Jesus. But if our walk and our talk don't, don't match, then the world is going to see a dysfunctional Jesus. And they don't want to be part of that church. So let me encourage you. Reach out. Help others to see the love of Jesus. Practice humility. Practice his grace, because he will give you the power to do it all. Have a great day, and God bless you.